Hi guys, today's video is the beginning of a new sort of series on the channel where we discuss changes that can be made to Dead by Daylight, whether that's gameplay changes, visuals, or things like perk ideas. We're kicking this off today with 10 perks on the survivor side that I feel are in need of a major change or just little buffs to make them more fun to use or to increase players wanting to use them. This list only contains 10 as stated, so if you have any perks that you feel need a huge rework, please let me know in the comments below. With that, let's jump into the video. The first one is going to be Calm Spirit. Calm Spirit is a perk that many people feel is quite pointless, but yet it does have its users who do enjoy the perk as is. I used this perk a while back in a video for Survivors Ranked, as it is a perk that belongs to Jake Park. But before we dive into the changes, let's talk about what Calm Spirit actually does. It prevents crows from being alerted by your proximity and flying off, unless they are being stepped on. It suppresses the urge to scream from pain at all times. It suppresses the all noises related to interacting with chests and totems, and it reduces the action speeds for unlocking, cleansing and blessing by 30%. It makes you not scream and it makes it so that you cleanse totems and open chests silently. However, this speed is decreased by 30%. I am not entirely sure why Behaviour recently reworked this perk to add that little nerf on the end, but I really feel like it was unneeded. The sound that you gain is pretty fun actually. A lot of killers didn't expect it when I was running it, and for killers who rely on audio cues to find out where you got hit, for example, Pyramid Head and his power, this could kind of confuse them. So what's my idea for a rework? Well, I wouldn't exactly make Calm Spirit meta, but perks like Calm Spirit exist so that it balances out the strong and the weak. The first change I would love to make to Calm Spirit is removing that nerf towards cleansing and unlocking chests. The speed decrease was really unnecessary and I feel the ability to cleanse and unlock silently would be wonderful for players who enjoy stealth plays without the annoyance of cleansing a hex totem so much slower. This second idea for a reworked calm spirit would introduce silence for gens. As a killer or even a survivor if you pay close enough attention, there is different sounds when working on a gen. If someone isn't on a gen, there's the normal sound of the gen's current progression just rattling away. However, if you pay close attention nearby, when a survivor is on the gen, you can actually hear the sounds of the survivor repairing it. My idea is that Calm Spirit could incorporate that. You could still hear the gen's progress, but not the noises a survivor makes when repairing a gen. It would be a bit like Bite the Bullet, how there's no medkit taping sounds when you heal. Like I said before, this could be helpful for players who really want to play as stealthy as possible and not make any noise. It's a small idea, nothing insane or meta, just remove the repair gen sounds simple. The second perk I'd love to get a major rework is Buckle Up. I don't think I've actually seen anyone use this perk in my whole three years of playing this game, and I can see why. It's not exactly powerful, and sure, like I said before, not every perk has to be, but they at least have to be useful, and Buckle Up just really isn't that useful. So what exactly does the current Buckle Up do? It unlocks the potential in your aura reading ability. You can determine the recovery progress of dying survivors by the intensity of their aura at a distance of up to 48 meters away. When healing another survivor from the dying state to the injured state, the killer's aura is revealed to both of you for 6 seconds. So basically, it makes it so that the dying survivor's aura will change to like a whitish colour when they're ready to be picked up. Okay, see what I mean by unhelpful? Or a bit regarding the killer is decent, I guess, as you both can see it. However, you could just have another aura perk or a perk that helps your teammates on and equipped rather than this. I don't know about you, I desperately want Buckle Up to be changed. So here's my idea for it. Let's take away the whole aura reading aspect of Buckle Up and instead let's make it a healing perk. Let's say whenever you pick someone up from the dying state, for 30 seconds you are given a 100% speed boost towards healing that person. Now I know what you might be thinking, that's a tad bit strong, but keep in mind we are getting a huge update in the future that will allow survivors to pick themselves up from the dying state anyway. So why not have a perk that allows you to help your team if they are slugged? Of course it would only activate if you are healing a person from the dying state for more than a few seconds, so that people couldn't abuse it just by tapping the person on the ground. And the speed increase is only for other survivors and not you. Think, we'll make it and we're gonna live forever if they had a baby. Maybe? Behaviour? Guardian is another perk I rarely see get used, and the aim of these ideas is to pick perks that have a very low usage rate and try to make them seem a bit more fun to use, so that people could incorporate them into their builds. Guardian is a general perk that once belonged to Steve Harrington as a teachable. So what does it do? When you unhook a survivor, the rescued survivor benefits from the following effects for up to 8 seconds. Scratch marks and pools of blood are suppressed. Additional 7% haste status boosting their movement speed. 
guardian reveals the killer's aura to you for eight seconds. Okay, not bad, but it's not too great either. It's a decent perk for helping out teammates, but what if the killer tunnels? They could wait out the base kit endurance and go after your teammate by just watching their movement. Eight seconds is not long enough time for a survivor to successfully escape a tunneling killer, especially if they have just taken that base kit hit. So what changes would I make? Well, first off, let's increase that time to 30 seconds. Secondly, let's get rid of that additional haste. The base haste is good enough and if you run borrowed time, it would be even better. In its place, let's put that unhooked survivor's grunts of pain are also suppressed. And that you can see the killer's aura for say around maybe 5 to 10 seconds. So this perk would work like so. Once someone is unhooked, they leave no scratch marks, pulls of blood or make no noise for 30 seconds. This way, if the killer is tunneling, they can't hear their cries. The aura reading can stay, allowing you to maybe take a hit for the tunnel survivor or just take chase in general. Of course, this perk would have to have a major cooldown so it wouldn't just be used consistently over and over again. But it could be something to think about. This perk used to be what Hyperfocus was, until Hyperfocus came along and was basically better than him. Now everyone forgot Fast Track existed and Hyperfocus is enjoying its 5 minutes of fame. Fast Track can be placed in a build with Stakeout and Hyperfocus, but in all honesty, that is kind of overkill. You can run Hyperfocus and Stakeout with two chase perks and have a solid gen rush slash chase build right there. So it got me thinking about poor old Fast Track and how we could change it to make it different and not just make it some token perk. Currently, Fast Track does this. Whenever a survivor is hooked, Fast Track gains 3 tokens, up to a maximum of 27 tokens. You consume all accumulated tokens after a great skill check on a generator. Each token grants a stackable 1% progression bonus in addition to the default progression bonus for succeeding a great skill check. But like stated before, Hyperfocus does the job quicker and better than Fast Track. So that leaves Fast Track kind of in the go with the other unwanted and unused perks. So I propose that Fast Track has a whole redesign. Instead of tokens when a survivor is hooked, I say we should get a speed increased. 10% speed increase for 5 seconds when a survivor is hooked. Sure, this would have a mini cooldown so that killer can just double hook and you get like 20% speed, but this perk could stack with other speed increase perks like prove thyself or resilience. Sure, it's not meh, but something other than tokens and maybe it could take a bit of its limelight back from hyperfocus. If you see my other videos, you will know how much I love empathic connection. It's a great perk for those who love to be the healer of the team and well, that's usually me. I adore this perk because it usually helps get me my healing challenges done really fast and it helps my teammates out by knowing there's someone always there to heal them. Currently, Empathic Connection does this. Whenever another survivor is injured, they can see your aura when within 96 meters of your location. You heal other survivors 10% faster. It's definitely not an insanely strong perk. It's nothing meh, but it's one that deserves more love and usage. So for this rework idea, it's something very small, but something that could really help out the other survivors and increase the usage of the perk, maybe by a small amount. So my idea for the rework is pretty much keeping it the same, but instead of healing another survivor at 10% speed, I would up it to 20%, just to make it more helpful. You didn't think I would forget to complain about no Mither, would you? No Mither is definitely up there with self-care as one of the worst perks in the game. Or maybe we should give No Mither its crown and say that it definitely is the worst perk in the game. It's rare you see a No Mither user, and that's usually because they're using it for a challenge. With the base kit unbreakable update coming, No Mither loses its one good thing, being able to pick yourself up from the dying state. So this perk is in need of a massive rework. As of right now, No Mither works like so. You suffer from the broken status effect for the entire trial, but benefiting from the following effects. Pools of blood are suppressed. When injured or dying, grunts of pain are reduced by 75%. Your recovery speed is increased by 25%. And you can fully recover from the dying state. You can probably see why it's bad, right? Sure, the recovery from the dying state is good. But like Staten, that will be based soon. So following a good long thinking session, I felt that no miler should be reworked just a little. Let's keep the pools of blood and reduce grunts of pain. But remove the dying state recovery because it's no longer needed and the increased recovery speed. Both of those are gone. Out of here. Instead, for the trading of your precious health state, what if you had a 7% increase to healing and gen repair? It would make up for the lack of your full health, but also be helpful to those around you. So that even if you go down in a 2 second chase, later on you could help with the gen and make it just a tiny bit quicker. You could even stack this with resilience for a bit more speed. I know this is just an idea, but whatever behavior you decide to do with this perk in the near future, I am just begging that they at least make it good. Overcome isn't a bad perk. There's a good reason as to why I decided to put it here today. And you're probably thinking, huh? But I'll get to it. Currently, Overcome works like so. Whenever you become injured, you retain the movement speed burst for an additional 2 seconds. 
overcome causes the exhausted state effect for 40 seconds. It's actually not a bad exhaustion perk and one I've used plenty of times in the past in builds centering around losing the killer. However, there's just one thing that bugs me about overcome. Taking a look at other perks like Sprint Burst, Lithe, and Balance Landing, all of these give you an increased movement speed for 3 seconds. You can probably now guess where I'm going with my rework idea, but uh, behavior. Just make this one 3 seconds too? It's only fair and it's not asking much, and it wouldn't be insanely powerful or anything, so come on. Buff it. You know you want to. Another Yunjin perk on my list, and this one is one you can probably agree with me about. It's pretty darn bad. And I really wish it was changed to be something just a bit stronger. It's another one that I have rarely seen used, and now that I'm thinking about it, I actually think I have never seen someone using this perk. Wow, self-preservation works like this. When another survivor is hit with a basic attack or a special attack within 16 meters of you, self-preservation activates. Scratch marks, grunts of pain when injured and bleeding are suppressed for the next 10 seconds. As you can see, it's kind of bad. It's definitely not one I'd use, and definitely one that really needs a good old reworking. So, how about this? Get rid of all these scratch marks and grunts of pain because who really needs it? Instead, whenever someone is hit in a 16 meter radius, you gain a 7% haste for 10 seconds. Ooh, speedy. I know, that sounds pretty alright. Of course, this would have to have a major cooldown so that those toxic little swift teams couldn't abuse it, but it could work. You could use the speed boost to take a hit for your injured teammate, or even dare I say it, flashlight save them if they went down or it would give you plenty of time to speed off and leave them for dead, whichever one you feel like doing. This one's pretty memey because it's just usually terrible. In all the times I have used the brew meat, which you know has probably been about like five times in my life, I have never 4%ed my way off the hook. Even with up the ante and a jar of salty lips offering equipped, the game said no. Currently, slippery meat works like this. It grants three additional self unhook attempts and increases the self unhook chance by 4%. Sure, slippery meat got reworked a few times in the past, the last one removing the ability to free yourself from bear traps because I guess behavior realized how rare it was to face dropper. Now it makes it so that you can try unhook yourself three more times instead of the usual three. Personally, this perk sucks. Unless you have a swift team running up the ante and four soul elip offerings, you'll never get any use from this perk. So here's what I think should happen to slippery meat. Firstly, remove those additional hook attempts. You see that 4%? Increase that up to 16%, giving you a 1 in 5 chance of a successful unhook. And who knows, maybe bringing up the ante and the offering would make it even more fun, and could also introduce a new meta, a bit like boil over and breakout rework combo before they took that from us. Finally, another perk I rarely see get used, but it's from Quentin Smith, one of my favourite survivors, so I kind of have to like it, don't I? Wake up isn't a bad perk, it's just an endgame one, and anyone who plays solo queue knows that seeing the endgame is as rare as getting a leather face that doesn't face camp you. Usually most people run perks that help them during the game and in the endgame. Anyway, wake up works like so. Once all generators are completed, wake up activates. The auras of the exegate switches are revealed to you within 128 meters. When opening the exegate, your aura is revealed to all other survivors within 128 meters. You open exegates 25% faster. So as you can see, it's not insane or anything, but it's all right, fun to use in endgame builds. I wasn't actually sure if I wanted to include this as a rework, but I figured wake up needs a tiny little tweak. My idea is to keep it pretty much the same. With the survivor seeing your aura while you're opening the gates, I feel like you should be able to see theirs too. This could be helpful for your teammates, because you could run over and take a hit so they escape or see what other teammates are up to, whether or not they're cleansing that noed totem or going in for your other slug teammate. I feel it would add a little bit of help just towards your team. But that's going to be it. I tried to keep these ideas to some more realistic expectation and not something super strong or weak. These are just fun ideas from someone who has played the game for a while and enjoys the perk changes. Again, if you disagree, feel free to let me know and if you have any ideas for reworks, let me know below. Maybe I can use one in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.